In this video, I'll demonstrate how to monitor a DRS cluster. So here I am in my vSphere environment. I'm logged into my vSphere client. And you can see here under hosts and clusters, I currently have three ESXi hosts, all of them running ESXi 7.0. And I've created a cluster here. So I have this cluster created and at the summary screen, we can see there's a little area for DRS. So I do have DRS running on this cluster and you can see here the cluster DRS score. Now this is the average DRS score of all of the virtual machines in the cluster. So remember, if you're used to vSphere 6.7 or 6.5 or, or any prior version of vSphere, what DRS used to do was manage the balancing of workload across all of the hosts in the cluster. So it really took kind of a host centric view and tried to equalize the workload on all of the hosts. What it does now is it specifically looks at individual VMs and tries to figure out which host each VM is going to perform the best on. And so we can see our cluster DRS score is 89%. That means that, that out of the VMs running on all of these hosts, the average DRS score is 89%. Now I'm just going to take a moment to boot up a couple more virtual machines. And when I boot up, you notice what it's doing. It's giving me an initial placement recommendation. It's telling me which host it recommends that I run this virtual machine on. And the reason that it's doing that is because this particular DRS cluster is not configured in fully automated mode. Otherwise, it would just pick where to run each VM. So if I go to my cluster and I go to configure, you can see here the DRS automation level is set to manual. And so now let's take a look at the cluster DRS score. And as I boot up more virtual machines, this is changing. And it looks like there's one VM that has a really poor DRS score. And so DRS is going to continue to analyze the performance of these VMs. And it's going to determine what the DRS score is for those individual virtual machines. So this little screen here, and you can see it just updated again, is giving me a nice little baseline as to the overall average DRS score of all of my virtual machines. So for my next step here, I just wanted to show you this imbalance here. I'm going to click on the cluster. I'm going to go to configure, and I'm actually going to change DRS, the automation level to fully automated so that it can move virtual machines around however it sees fit. And I'm going to set my migration threshold right in the middle, which is where it should usually be unless you have a reason to, to set it either more or less aggressive. And so now if DRS observes that it has the ability to improve performance, it can start migrating virtual machines around to improve the overall performance. And we'll be able to see that here in our recent tasks. And so look what happened. I reconfigured my cluster and immediately it migrated a virtual machine and now all of my VM DRS scores have improved drastically. So that's one of the first places that you can monitor things. I can go to recent tasks here and see what's going on. I can also go to the cluster and under monitor I can go to tasks and events and I can see what's been going on inside of my DRS cluster which virtual machines have been moved around and I can see what initiated it and I can see this was system initiated. So this migration of the database VM from my first host to my second host happened automatically. So yeah, I can monitor exactly what's going on with DRS there under tasks and see what it's doing. I can also go to the DRS history. And I can see all of the actions that DRS has specifically taken. So if I don't want to kind of sort through everything in tasks, the DRS history gives me a great consolidated view of all the actions that DRS has taken. And if there's any recommendations, I can see them here. 
If I want to refresh those recommendations, I can run DRS now to determine if any moves should be made. I can see any DRS faults listed here. And then I've got this VM DRS score. So here I can see all of my virtual machines and I can sort them by which one has the highest DRS score and which one has the worst DRS score. And then from a general cluster perspective, I can see the overall CPU utilization per host on all of the hosts in my cluster. I can see the memory utilization uh, per host within my cluster and the network utilization as well. So I can observe some of those critical metrics on a per host basis by looking at the DRS monitoring within the cluster. So let's try and make something happen here. I'm going to go to my cluster under configure. I'm going to change it back to manual automation and I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to take some of the virtual machines that are running on my second host and I'm going to move them to the first host. And so what I'm trying to do here is start to overwhelm that first host a little bit. So now I've migrated my database server back to this first ESXi host. Let's go back to the cluster. Let's go back to monitor. And under DRS, I'm going to go to recommendations. It's not recommending anything right now. But let me run DRS now and see if it has any recommended changes. And there is one. Migrate database from the first host to the second host. So now I can go ahead and apply those recommendations and get those VMs moved around as, as DRS sees fit. Now, if there's any faults with DRS, those will be displayed here. So at the moment, we can see that there are currently not any DRS faults. Let's go ahead and try to create one. So here on host 192.168.199.14, I've got the app server and the database server. And what I've done is I've placed both of those virtual machines on local storage now. So I should not be able to migrate app server to the second host because it has local storage. And so I can't even see that second host listed here. It's not even available. So I can't migrate this virtual machine to the other host. It's stuck on 192.168.199.14. And I did the same thing with app server and database. So now that I know that both of those VMs are stuck on this first host, let me go to my cluster and I'm going to go to VM host rules and I'm going to create a new rule. And I'm basically going to create a rule that is going to keep certain virtual machines apart. I want these virtual machines running on different ESXi hosts. And I'm going to pick app server and database. Now I know that they can't run on different hosts because they're both on local storage. So I'm going to create a VM host rule that DRS is going to try to keep these virtual machines separated, keep them on different ESXi hosts. And so now let's go to DRS and let's take a look at the recommendations and let's run DRS now and see if it gives me any recommendations. Nothing there. Let's go to faults. It could not fix that anti-affinity rule violation. Again, because both of these VMs are on the local storage of this first host and DRS doesn't do storage vMotion. It only does compute vMotion and only moves VMs from one host to another. So that's an example of a fault that could exist inside of my DRS cluster. Now, another problem that could potentially exist in my cluster is if I go to my ESXi hosts and I take a look at them, do they have a VM kernel port that is marked for vMotion traffic? So I can see my first host here, it has a VM kernel port marked for vMotion. And my second host, that also has a VM kernel port for vMotion. What about my third host? My third host does not. So my third host is part of this DRS cluster, but is not really doing anything. 
The way that DRS works is it leverages vMotions to migrate virtual machines around. And if there's a host that's in the cluster and vMotion is not properly configured on that ESXi host, then DRS can't leverage that ESXi host. DRS cannot move anything to or from that ESXi host as long as vMotion is broken. And again, if I'm trying to monitor this cluster as a whole, I can, of course, go and take a look at the overview performance charts. And I can also take a look if I want to delve down into individual resources here and take a closer look. I can bring up some advanced performance charts. And so I can create an advanced performance chart to look at all sorts of things like, for example, my DRS scores and how that DRS average score has been changing over time. 